Welcome back to the Lou Perez podcast. My name is Lou Perez, and I'm happy to report that right now you can order my book. That's right. I wrote a book. It's called That Joke Isn't Funny Anymore on the Death and Rebirth of Comedy. Follow the link in the description or head over to Amazon and search for Lou Perez. That joke isn't funny anymore. If you want other options on how you can buy my book, please sign up for my newsletter at theluperez.com. You could also join my community at theluperez.locals.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could leave a five-star review, that would be amazing. Whether you're a long-time listener or first-time, five-star reviews are lovely. If you're looking for other ways you can support me, you could do so by supporting my sponsors. If you're into CBD products, please check out PalomaVerdeCBD.com. Use promo code Lou to get 25% off purchases over $75. And if you like cold brew, check out Black Organic Cold Brew at www.blvckbrew.com and use promo code Lou for free shipping. All right, let's go. Today is a very special presentation of the Lou Perez podcast. I'm so happy to have my guest on. He's uh, a man from my past. But let's just say he knew me a very long time ago, and uh, I'm so happy to have him here. So uh, his name is Barry Goldsmith, and I know Barry because he was a professor of mine at New York University, man, going back close to 20 years ago. And I took not one, but two comedy writing classes with him. And uh, if, you've, uh, if you've kept up with, uh, with Barry's work, he is an, uh, a trained architect. He does um, travel shows and uh, blogging. Uh, and he was also a, a comedian as well. So I'm, I'm very happy to have him. This is, uh, it took us a little while to get the tech working. Um, but now that we're here... I think uh, I think I think we're it's going to go off without a hitch. Thanks. First of all, I must uh, say that you're terrific. You always were funny. I could see it in you then. When my eyes were younger, of course, I could see better then. But congratulations, especially on your book too. That joke isn't funny anymore. I thought since I'm much older than you, going back a little further and set, and writing the book with you, that joke was never funny. So I might as well use. Some, my background with age. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's on Amazon. It's a great book. And uh, well, thank you for that introduction. I mean, the thing that I get all the time is what does architecture have to do with comedy? And right. my, my stupid answer is I'm off the wall. <laughs> my more intelligent answer is Sir John Van Brough who was the architect of Blenheim, which was the birthplace of Winston Churchill um, outside of Oxford, uh, was, in addition, a restoration comedy playwright. And his play, The Provoked Wife, his comedy is still performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company, but with different actors from the 17th century, because the original ones are all dead by now. Oh, I so. thought they were just, they were all just divas. Like they just, like, they're so, you know, so above, you know, uh, uh, performing right now. So, so tell me, um, I know you've had the, uh, the podcast, uh, what gave you the idea to do a podcast? I know you've done live shows, you, you know, you were on, uh, the, 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 that internet show. What gave you the idea to do a podcast? I'm gonna uh, do now. Oh my God. I know. No, it, it just, it just happened. Like you're, uh, you're actually doing, yeah, you're doing the work You're You're helping me. Cause I, I'm, I have a tough time, uh, uh, I have a tough time leading conversations now after um after a, a full day of what I've been uh, been doing. But um yeah, I think it you know, when it came to doing the podcast, it was one of those things where everybody has a podcast and my wife so so everybody having a podcast had kind of kept me from doing a podcast for a while. And then uh then there was also just sort of the um uh knowing that it's recorded and it's a very long, um, you know, segment of time. So if you mess up, you know, you could fix the mess up, but it's going to take more time to fix the mess up in editing. So I think there was a little bit of a fear of my, uh, a fear of like putting myself out there. Um, but eventually my wife, uh, said, you know, you should have been doing a podcast for the past 10 years. 
Uh, so you might as well, you might as well do it. And then I, uh, yeah, then I started it and, uh, I've, uh, I've kept it going. I took a little bit of a, of a break when I was working on the book because, um, I had a, uh, um, uh, an author, uh, Peter Bogosian, uh, who, uh, gave me some sage advice at the beginning. And he said, uh, he said, whatever you have going on, cancel it. Yeah. You know, you're not doing podcasts. You're not doing appearances. You're working on your book. That's what you're doing. How long did the book take? Because it's wonderful. It seems like you were inspired and just did it like that. Um, I had no, I, I, I'm really amazed at how quickly I was able to turn it around. I, 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 so when I was, when I was writing the book, um, I, uh, let's see, I think I got the book deal. I think I got it like signed sealed and delivered and uh, the book deal sometime in like may or june of last year and um uh and then during that time my uh, my, my family we had just moved to new jersey and my wife was pregnant with our second with our oh, second wow. baby yeah and uh and son. yeah and i i have a son and i was let's say i was still technically unemployed um, so I was doing all the things that, you know, these huge major life milestones kind of all at the same time. And then I, and then I found out that I got this book deal. So I had to, I, I had to write it and, um, I, uh, handed in my first draft of it a week before my second son was born. Oh, and wow. then, and two weeks before we had a kitchen in our house. So that's how I sort of, uh, plotted it out so now you can have kitchen debates you know, like uh uh khrushchev and kennedy see that you have, uh, uh, you, you've grown and, and i'm an architect you didn't call me to help you with your kitchen they might I, uh, well, well uh, are you are you uh, yeah like uh, uh, uh are you are you working that side of of, of architecture no I, i'll tell you uh i also uh, wrote a book a visual book i i had t a book up there on amazon too it's called trump architecture Great Design or Erectile Dysfunction. It's up hmm. there on Amazon yet. And I'm now shopping another book. It, I, I don't know if you're old enough to remember uh, People Separated at Birth, uh, yep. all of that one, I'm like almost 30, 30 years ago or so. Well, I'm doing something that combines architecture and comedy. It's Buildings Separated at Birth. Hmm. Uh, buildings that look like other buildings. And it's also a warning to architects. Don't steal other people's design because there are people out there watching you. So it, it serves two purposes. So do you have an agent or did they come to you? I think from what I, I know, uh, somebody came to you and discovered you rather than an agent uh, putting your name out there. Am I right? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have an agent. Um, I, uh, the, the book uh, came out of uh, a piece that I had published in the Wall Street Journal at the end of uh, 2020. Uh, called how I became a quote far right radical, and um, uh, so I had the article in the Wall Street Journal, and I was uh, Facebook friends with um, a, a publisher, uh, David Bernstein from Bombardier Books, Post Hill Press, and you know, and I thought, hey, you know what? I I, I just found out that uh, David, who I'd been friends with on Facebook for a little while, just because. That, that's how kind of like circles grow and you know he's from new yeah. york and, and that sort of thing and then i found out that he was a, a publisher and i'm like wouldn't it be cool if i sent him this article and then he responded oh you should write a book and that's exactly what happened uh so yeah. It, it yeah it was it was something you know it was it was pretty uh miraculous uh, my my uh my wife often uses language like um putting things out into the universe and, you know, accepting, you know, getting at that manifesting. And, uh, you know, if I was, you know, of that mind, I think, you know, in a way this will, it was kind of like a manifestation. So, well, I, I, you know, speaking, putting things out in the, in the universe, that's Elon Musk too. I mean, I yeah. Like, look at, look at that. Tesla yeah. And, um, as actually Musk, we talk about him again today. Uh, well, well, today we, we are recording this on the day that Elon Musk has um, purchased Twitter, so it is now uh, it is now Musk's. So uh, it, it's it's interesting to see uh, a lot of people uh, freaking out about it. Um, and uh, I don't know, Barry, are you on? Are you even on Twitter? 
Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I am. I don't use it that much. Uh, let, let's put it this way. Uh, I don't like mistweeting people. Okay. Mm. Mistweet people. Mistweeting people. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. Let's say I'm a tell of the pun. Okay. Oh, my God. Watch <laughs> out, everybody. But right now, there are so many people. If you're, if you're driving your car right now, there's a good chance that you just, you know, went off the road and into a tree because that pun was so strong. It was like a, it was like a, it was a wind just knocking your car to the side. Are you, um, Barry, are you still teaching uh, at NYU? Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm teaching um, term, pro you know, sp special term projects and things like that. I consult. Uh, basically, I'm involved with travel now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm now putting together a, a show for uh, actually 50 and over. Uh, I've, uh, I've been on a show, speaking of far right, uh, Biz TV's Liquid Lunch. Been on it since uh, the pandemic. I've had my own uh, travel radio show. Been there, haven't done that on WOR until the pandemic. I've had a travel column for going on 12 years called uh, Been There, Haven't Done That. So I've been involved in, in travel a great deal. And now I'm concentrating on older people 50 and mm -hmm. over so i will invite you to be part of that 10 years down the road <laughs> when i'm your age because i decided i'm at the age now where i've got to lose years i mean let, let's face it i have to look younger and i can only afford an adjunct plastic surgeon i can't afford the whole thing <laughs> although well, I, here, here's the thing how to how to look younger if I tell people I'm 85, you'll go, oh, my God, you look terrific. And you never like use plastic, need plastic surgery. I mean, I told that to Joan. The hell with plastic surgery. Save your, I, I wrote for Joan Rivers. Save your money. But just tell, add 10 or 15 years to what you are. I, in this case, added much more. So I have a cushion there, too. I, I, re I remember... Uh... Uh, I remember you, you talking to us in, in class uh, often about uh, your experience at, at Joan Rivers uh, with Joan Rivers. How did that How did that come to pass? Like, how did you uh, How did you make that happen? Working for Joan? Uh, actually, uh, I saw that uh, she was coming to New York City. Uh, this was God. Uh, well, I got out of architecture school uh, in the late eighties. Couldn't make a living as an architect, so I read that she Joan was coming to New York at CBS Studios on all the way west on 57th street so i had a friend a girlfriend who lived in former girlfriend who lived in la she found out where joan lived and i wrote up material on spec and sent it to her sure enough i got a call saying barry barry uh, this is joan call me back and i thought it was another friend who uh, was does poor imitation so i waited a week or so and then i got another call and i she said i'll be at the westbury hotel may 15th uh please visit me so i went there i was wearing a sport jacket and i figure you know what i gotta dress like a professor so i dress like a professor wearing a sport jacket a suit and whatever uh, joan came in with melissa and she said to the concierge at the westbury she said that uh that um comedy writer never showed up did he and uh, the concierge discreetly pointed like that. And she said, that's not a comedy writer, that's a banker. So I went up there, uh, I guess I impressed her. I got the job, wrote there for, I guess, uh, until the show ended in 1993. Then I went to uh, Steve Ducey's house party, uh, the Steve Ducey from Fox and Friends. And the other person involved in that, Brian Kilmeade, lectured in one of my classes on comedy in the news. I don't know if it was your class or not. So uh, that's basically how I, uh, I wrote for Joan. Then I also did uh, I did humor for Maury Povich's show for six months. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, what, what, was that before or after yeah, like every I, every show being about you know basically uh okay. uh you know whether someone is the father or not the paternity yeah. test maury yeah. and i liked it because he was old enough to be my father i mean and and he didn't have a facelift anyway so um uh i tried to do humor for it and we had on a contest uh, we had on a guest who uh 
let's put it this way. She was sitting on her in her home, in her living room, and solidified airline shit. Can I say shit on the show? Oh, yeah, sure. You could, you could take a shit on the show if you wanted. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm doing it now through my mouth. All there we go. Listening. Hey, hey, come on. A- anyway, she was sitting in her living room, solidified airline shit c- came through the, r- through the roof. Uh, it, it almost killed her. And the line was, it could have been worse. It could have been airline food. For uh, an hour, I was going through with Maury how to say it. He said, it could have been worse. It could have been airline food. And I said, no, Maury, that's a throwaway line. And so a um, very nice guy, very smart. His, uh, his, his wife, uh, Connie Chung, is charming. But he and comedy, not exactly a mix. But yeah. the show was great. It's off the air now. So uh, you should have him on as guest. I I think that that would be great. Uh, hook it up. Is a or do you guys still in touch after that? Uh, yeah, that six yeah. months. Or oh, well, that, you can go to the uh, Dakota. He lives at the. I shouldn't say he lives at the Dakota. No, he lives actually. I shouldn't say that. People may come to his house. He actually lives in North Dakota. So go go out there next time you go to LA. Stop in North Dakota. They're, they're like Lou. Where are you going? I'm going to North Dakota to meet Maury Povich. And they're gonna be like, I I had no idea you were such. Uh, such a maniac for Maury. <laughs> well, actually, uh, you know, uh, people go to North Dakota. Uh, people from uh, uh, from <coughs> um, North uh, from South Dakota go to North Dakota uh, for the summer. It's it's much cooler up there. Everybody knows that. So now I'm involved with travel. Um, yeah. I, well, we'll, 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 we'll be uh, Barry before before we go there. Just um, want to talk a little bit more just about uh, uh, just. Yeah, just about uh, Joan for for a little bit now. Um, you know, she she's considered you know one of the you know one of the greats, a, a legend of, of comedy. And you know, what what is it like? You know, especially being a young comedian, you know, right out of school, uh, architecture school, yeah. working with uh, with a legend. Because I I have a friend of mine who works with a current comedy legend. And um, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say his name. And oh, I often Donald Trump. You know, he, he, he writes uh, he writes jokes for Donald Trump. Uh, not he, uh, no. I, I think Donald Trump does his does all of his own writing. Uh, but uh, uh, so when, when my friend working with this you know comedy legend, I often ask him, you know, does anybody say no to the guy? Does any, anyone ever say like, yeah, that it's not working. It's that joke's not working. I wonder, you know, are there people that reach sort of a stature where it's really tough for for those around them, especially like a young up, up, up and comer to tell them, ah, I don't think that, I think this could be stronger or, you know. Well, um, actually it, it's strange. Uh, Joan appear, appeared kind of out there, a little crude in her nightclub back, a little crude on television. And one of the first things she told me is, uh, and I was shocked, she's very ladylike. She crosses her legs, pulls down her skirt. Uh, and that's very hard to do, especially when she's wearing slacks. But um, she, she said, you know, Joan Rosenberg would never invite Joan Rivers to dinner. They're two separate people. Socially, she's very refined, very polished. And you turn on a camera and she's out there, you know. So uh, I was fortunate enough to know both Joan Rivers. Uh, we were at, uh, in fact, we were in Washington for a banquet for uh, the AIA was, I think, honoring Prince Charles. And I was her uh, toy, t- uh, her boy toy, uh, hmm. uh, I guess. And in fact, I wrote the, the joke for Prince Charles. Uh, it was, um, the queen couldn't be here today. Um, oh, okay. She was having surgery. She was having her handbag surgically removed from her arm. Okay. That was the joke. It got applause. I thought it was stupid. That's one thing about writing humor for somebody else. You never know what is going to get a laugh. Something you think is a sure laugh bombs and vice versa. Mm. But I saw you, your act with, with Luke uh, quite a few times and it was just a total level of laughter. It was, it was very up there and very consistent. I have to say that. So. Um, thank you. Thank, oh, was it with uh, Greg and Lou? Or yeah, with, uh, with our, our, our duo. Sorry, Greg and Lou. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's all. About, I wish it was all about me. I wish it was just Lou and Lou. And, but no, I had to share it with the guy. Yeah. It should have been Lou and Greg. Come on. I know. I've been. I. I've been saying that for 20 years that we've been. Uh, we've been working together. But no, it's. It's. Uh, no, I. I really appreciate uh, those. Those kind words. And 
uh, part of you know when I was writing the book, it it gave me uh, an opportunity to look back on you know my career thus far in in comedy, and you know for a lot of it, it wasn't much of a career, uh, even though I was doing a lot of comedy. Um, and uh, you know, looking back at uh, the amount of uh, times that Greg and I would you know, be performing live sketch comedy and everything that went into that from writing and rewriting to uh, um, rehearsing late night tech rehearsals and uh, playing shows that were packed out and other shows that, you know, there was hardly anyone there. Um, and throughout the whole time, especially if you're, you know, if you're uh, playing, if you're doing sketch comedy, you have to bring performance energy to whatever stage that you're performing on. So one of the things about you in general is um you're you're good you're good looking and you've got a great voice now i remember when uh gilbert godfrey did the uh, the joan rivers show and hell of a nice guy and i'm so sorry he died mm. uh, relatively relatively young you know, he had yeah. a family and everything and i mean that's tragic and uh, and joan said uh something like Oh, uh, Gilbert! I said to her, "Gilbert is so funny." Um, uh, and and she said, "You know what?" I should. Yeah, she said, "If you look like him and sounded like him, you do much better and make more money than you do now." So <laughs> I, I don't know whether that is a compliment to, to uh, uh, Gilbert or an insult to Gil Gilbert or a or a, a um, an insult or a uh, appraising of me, but, but that's right. what Joan is like. <laughs> you have to guess sometimes what she's saying. I take it as a compliment to Gilbert as an insult to me because the guy just died. If he didn't just die, I would say it was both. So I got to be kind. Yeah, we, we, was the, the, this whole show, it's a, uh, this whole episode is about being kind, being kind to other comedians, being kind to ourselves. <laughs> yes. it's the it's it's the you know it's the end of the night of a on a on a monday night so it's time to be uh be kind to ourselves and so kind ice cream bars and candy bars and health bars become backers for Lou's show right now come on we're pushing your product kind Please. Ki uh, kind bars and kind ice cream because we're the kind who do that Okay. There, there we go i got um uh, barry is my hype man and, and also my um <laughs> My my manager, when it comes to uh, uh, fu future sponsors, we actually I actually have a couple of sponsors. I have a uh, I have a, a black uh, cold brew, um, and I also have a, a Paloma Verde CBD. So if you like What's cold CBD? brew, what is CB, uh, CBD? I don't I I don't know what it is exactly, um, but um, I, I I let the guys at the lab. Uh, take uh, take care of that. Uh, a lot of people uh, take CBD oil and you know for uh, uh, inflammation and and stuff like that. I'm I'm, I'm told. So. <laughs> oh, uh, I I do incantations. I do voodoo incantations from voodoo dolls I bought in New Orleans, and much cheaper, and and it really works. Okay. <laughs> what with um with the travel stuff that you're doing um. Were you always traveling around the uh, around the world? Were you always like globe trotting, or is that something that's relatively new? No, I, I've done it for years. I've been to 117 countries, uh, um, and not in one day. I just want to add uh, over a period of actually 40 years. I was, uh, I'll tell you in a second. I was seven years old in uh, 1968 when my parents first took me to Europe. So uh, actually, what I find is that. Uh, since I think I'm fun, and uh, my ex-wife said I'm a lot of fun in bed, especially when I'm not there. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that leisure travel should be fun. And I actually am now, uh, uh, shall we say, hosting a 50-plus TV travel show. I have two names for it, okay? One name is uh, You Haven't Seen It All, okay? And the other name is traveling well into the sunset i haven't mm. decided i will let the sponsors decide but for a year and a half i well more than a year and a half i was on started on um uh what's what's the channel news america american news uh, uh fascist uh, the, the far right channel 
Uh, is it um, Newsmax? Newsmax. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Uh, Newsmax. Yeah. I was. It was on Newsmax. It was Liquid Lunch with John Tobacco on Newsmax. Then it was to the Biz TV Network, and I was on every fi- Friday doing Funny Fridays. And I snuck in uh, every Friday. I snuck in travel. I did a a video segment on. Uh, this was before last June when you weren't allowed to enter the European Union because of COVID. And mm. I did something on Paris in New York and uh, it actually went viral. So, uh, and I've done other things. I did uh, a comparison of a temple in India that I visited with a chunky column that looks like bananas with a visual of Carmen Miranda with her banana hat. So uh, uh, I got people interested in that. I've done tours around the world. I've done press trips for the, uh, I, I guess for tourist boards, airlines, and hotels. So now I'm doing uh, a travel show for those 50 and over. Uh, I also invented a, created something new. It's called Only Pack Once Tours. I particularly don't like cruises. And people think mm-hmm. if you're over 60, you have to take a cruise. Right. I just think you waste time for, uh, takes you 40 minutes to get off a boat, Onto the uh, onto the land. I've lectured on cruises. What I tell my groups are, okay, we're taking the train in from uh, Civitavecchia, the port of Rome, directly into the center of Rome, bypassing traffic uh, for two hours, going into Rome during rush hour. So I have my ways of doing doing things. I was an intern in college at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I even gave a tour to Audrey Hepburn on a Monday when. The museum was closed. So I love doing that. And I figure in old age, you ought to do what you like. My only pack once tours are like cruises, except you stay at one hotel, like in Paris. We stayed at the Intercontinental uh, Hotel. And uh, every day you go on a high speed train for a day trip in a different direction in uh, from Paris, north, south. You can go to uh, Provence and you're back in your bed in your hotel that night. And you see all of a country, including inland cities, that you can't on a cruise. So mm. I'm bringing that to life. And I just hope to make a few money and get a few friends. So, uh, yeah. And, and I hope I'm a, a, around long enough so that when your sons take honeymoons, they'll take it on some of my tours. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that would be great. Um, uh, Audrey Hepburn, wow. Like, what was. Uh... What, what was that like? What was it just you and her? And it was, did, it feel, yeah. did it feel like a date in a way? It kind of. She said, by the way, are you doing anything for, 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 for lunch? And I said, um, uh, no, I, I, I came especially because to give you a tour, this is the highlight of my uh, 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 of so far my life up until now. And I, I graduated college at, uh, at, at 19, so uh, Phi Beta Kappa. And now I'm a Phi Beta Kappa keynote speaker with my Phi Beta Kappa key. Anyway, so anyway, she said, well, let's extend the day. I'd like to invite you to lunch. And we went wow. to the Four Seasons. At that time, I could just afford one season, but she treated me to all four. And uh, I remember taking her to the, uh, the paintings gallery, and she's quite knowledgeable. And she said in her Audrey Hepburn voice, oh, that's a Caravaggio. I just love Caravaggio. She was very in- intelligent and got Christmas cards from her uh, every year uh, until, until she died. In fact, I was, this is kind of a, another funny things happen to me, whether I want them to or not. The day that Clinton was inaugurated, I went out to see my father who had Alzheimer's disease. He was in a nursing home in New, Jer- New Jersey. And I stopped by uh, to watch TV out of doors at Macy's. Uh, uh, after Penn Station, they played the uh, the inauguration uh, on a, a public TV set that was set up outside of Macy's, and it said the uh, the swearing in, and underneath were the traveling headline that said Audrey Hepburn dead at sixty four, and oh. I started crying, you know, visibly crying, and there were two uh, black women there looking at me and said. Leave it to the honky to cry because a Democrat is sworn into office. I was crying because of the sub-headline that Audrey Hepburn died. 
And I was so taken aback that I didn't even have enough presence to answer them and say, you know, I voted for the guy. I voted. For right. Him. So anyway, things, well, things like that happen. And there's a lot of humor in travel. Speaking of. Well, well, well Barry, Barry, before, before you go there, I, it, it, it feels like a, there's sort of a theme, like things like that happen to you. And it seems like things like that happen. You're, you seem so open to, I don't know, experience and trap and travel and, and going around the world where, you know, in, in a way it, it, it's kind of like, you're the right guy for it to happen to. Yeah. You know, like, uh, or as uh, Lucy, uh, as Rick, uh, Ricky would say, Mira lo que tiene cosa. It could only happen to Lucy. Okay, it's the same type of thing. Uh, I was in a rotating restaurant in uh, in uh, Beijing, and I was with my girlfriend. And all of a sudden, she said, "My God, somebody stole my bag. What happened? Oh my God!" So they called the police and everything. We were sitting there, and sure enough, an hour later, after. It made the whole revolution of 360 degrees. There was the bag popping Came up back. on the windowsill. Mm. I thought we were going to be thrown into a Chinese pri uh, prison for that. I mean, things like that actually happened to me. And when my parents took me when I was a kid uh, to the Soviet Union, I, I kind of did, cra did crazy things. Um, the perfect souvenir, I thought then, uh, we went into department stores, empty shelves everywhere. So what did I buy? I bought an empty shelf as a souvenir, and I still have it. It even has the communist star and uh, stamped on it, and it's my souvenir of the Soviet Union, an empty shelf. So I always found, kind of found humor, uh, humor in travel. Uh, I was at uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia with a, with a group. It was a, a press trip. And uh, the, I was taping uh, the, the guy, uh, videotaping the guy. Do, are you familiar with? Uh, uh, I mean, Pol Pot, I know of. Um, oh, so when oh, you bring yeah, up Cambodia, God, that's what I think. Thank God Pol Pot went to pot. Okay. He's no longer there. Uh, are you familiar with Abbott and Costello's Who's on First? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. okay. I did the pull with the poor guy at Anchor Watt. I did, he did There's Anchor Watt. We were taping it, and he said, "I said, where's what?" And he said, "There's what?" And I said, "Where's what?" And I was doing that for five minutes, like uh, uh, Abbott and Costello, who's on first. And uh, I still have that as some of the humorous videos that I have from around the world. I also uh, collected um, photos of uh, ladies' rooms and men's rooms uh, uh, signs. I think that some of them are the funniest things uh, uh, that you can see. Uh, I won't give you any examples because that would take too long. What about your travels? Where have you been, my friend? Uh, uh, Donald Trump gives us nar gives us narcissists a very bad name. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I uh, you know I was when you when you brought up France. So for my um, my my honeymoon with my. Uh, uh, with my wife, uh, obviously, uh, we we spent time in um, Cassis in uh, the south of France, and then yes. we went to yes. uh, Pro, um, uh, Aix de Provence and in Paris. Um, but I, uh, my one of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite country to go to is Spain. I absolutely love uh, Madrid, and um, but uh, well, the second leg of my of of our honeymoon, uh, we went to Iceland, and. Um, I don't know if you, if you spent much much time in Iceland, but it's interesting hearing you talk about uh, doing stuff for people who are fifty and over. Because we we met a really great couple there. Because we were kind of went on like this kind of short hike uh, with a through a waterfall, and uh, at one point I helped uh, the uh, uh, the wife uh, uh, get over uh, you know some of the rocks there, and uh, they were talking to us about all the places that they've been around the, around the planet. And their motto was uh, cover the earth before the earth covers you. And I thought that was a really great way, uh, great way to put it. Well, see, so I'm more eco ecologically correct and green. So um, I'm covering the earth before I go up in smoke and rise to the heavens. I'm being cremated. So, uh, but that, that that is very very catchy. What did you think of Reykjavik, or am I saying it correctly? Um, I uh, yeah, I, I believe you're saying it uh, correct. You have a southern Icelandic 
uh, accent. Um, <laughs> I, it's, it's slow. I said, rare to be. <laughs> we, uh, well, well uh, I absolutely loved it. It was, it was probably my favorite, one of my favorite, uh, places to go. I was blown away by everything. The, the landscape is otherworldly. You feel like you're on another planet. Um, if anybody, if anybody's looking to go there, I'd say definitely rent a car. Um, there were times where, you know, for, you know, an hour, there was no one driving behind us. So we can go as slow as we want to just creep through, creep over the terrain and, and the landscape, uh, over there. And, um, something I noticed when I came back, uh, we were, we were living in Brooklyn at the time and I went and, uh, was, was eating at a, at a, one of our local spots. And next to me were two friends who obviously hadn't seen each other in a while. And one of them had just been to Iceland. And I, so I sort of listened in on the converse, conversation and every single thing that guy was telling his friend about Iceland is the same exact thing I would say if I was telling a friend about Iceland. It seemed, uh, it seemed, it seemed almost like we all had the, uh, um, the uh, same experience uh, of the, of the place. I like the Springs. Uh, I, they also had surprising yeah. a lot of wooden architecture that kind of surprised me because I thought, uh, um well uh, it, i've only been there like two days at a time stopovers on the way to europe yeah. but it's also worthwhile having a short trip what is it five hours uh, by plane instead of, uh, uh, of 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 seven or eight to uh, the continent so it, it, it's it's quite wonderful my favorite city is uh paris uh, mm. I, I studied at a cold days beaux art i met my wife there and uh, I'll, I'll always, I'll always love Paris. Uh, there are new, new museums. In fact, I was just there in November, and they opened three museums uh, during COVID. Now that takes guts. Uh, and yeah. There's a new museum right in the Place de la Concorde, which is uh, the Musée Hotel de la Marine. It's 18th century. If, have you been to Versailles? Uh, yeah, yeah. We did a uh, a day trip there. Yeah. Okay, well, the main palace is not furnished. Everything is reproduced. This uh, muse Musée Hotel de la Marine is 18th century, and it is like stepping back in the 18th century. The furniture, the floors, everything is magnificent, and it's right in the center of the Place de la Concorde, which is right in the center of Paris. Now, you mentioned Madrid. I happen to like Madrid even more than Barcelona. It's got the museums, and as I said before, with only pack once, you can go now with high-speed trains and you can go from Madrid to Seville in two and a half hours. You can Bar go to Barcelona in two and a half hours. You can go from New York to Boston in three and a half hours. You can go from New York to Washington, D.C. in three and a half hours. And when you're my age, uh, Lou, it'll still be three and a half hours or maybe even longer because those trains are going to break down because we won't buy any new ones. So uh, that's what I think of transportation in the United States. Mm. Yeah. The, um, the, there's something about uh, the culture of, of, of Spain and Madrid in, in particular, where on every block is just, there's a bar, there are bars and restaurants, bars and restaurants, bars and restaurants. And the, um, the the culture there, like the tapas culture, is is real. Like we uh, we would go and get a you know get a beer somewhere, and they would come out and give you a free you know a free tapas. And there were times we were getting like um, fish, uh, like fish uh, fish croquettes, things that you know in New York you would be you know spending so much money to oh, get. Yes. They were just giving it for free because you got it. Go it comes with your beer. And the Spanish are, are, are very great, gracious to, to begin with. Now, why else do I like Madrid more than Barcelona? Barcelona, with the uh, the suburbs or the cities around it, is the Salvador Dali Museum, and, and even uh, Saint Petersburg, Florida, has a Dali Museum. Okay, every uh, uh, Montmartre uh, in Paris has a Dali Museum mm -hmm. and showroom where they actually want to sell reproductions more than they want to show you the actual Dali. But around uh, Madrid, there's Segovia, there's Aranjuez, there's El Escorial. There is so much around Toledo, of course. There's yeah. so much around it that you can do 
10 days to two weeks just in Madrid, whereas Barcelona is a beautiful city. And after you've rambled in the Rambles, I don't think, you know, it, it's beautiful, but it's also where a lot of cruise ships leave. Yeah, I, I went to um, uh, I went to Barcelona uh, for one trip. I forget how many summers ago. Um, I, I think I was still in college, so it was uh, uh, it was around that time. And then I, I actually went to Figueras, which is uh, uh, Dali's uh, hometown, yes, exactly. and and, that, and that's where I went. Uh, and I saw the uh, the the Dali Museum. And uh, at at that point in, in life, he was my favorite artist. I, I was really blown away by the surrealist stuff and all that. But uh, I was used to seeing his paintings in books or or even on the calendar that I had in like my dorm. Um, and then uh, actually going to the museum and seeing that it's paint, you know, uh, I don't know. It, it's sort of like it, it's sort of like a kid who's raised on like just pornography and has no idea what real sex is like or what a real, you know, what, what, what a real situation of what with a woman is or what she feels like. And then he's sort of like, uh, I, I don't know, uh, not, 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 not so happy with his first experience, I guess. Well, uh, uh, it's funny that you, you touch upon Salvador Dali. Uh, Salvador Dali was a surrealist and there are several uh, movements in art that are related to humor. Surrealism is one. If you like Dali, uh, there's the Magritte Museum in uh, in uh, Brussels. I mean, there's so much. And Salvador Dali was a very strange man. When I was a little kid, we we had dinner at the my parents and, and I took me to dinner at the Hotel Maurice. Okay, there was a strange man looking at us uh, from the distance, and. Uh, my mother whispered to me, he's a very famous artist, like Salvador <laughs> Dali. And he said, Shh, don't look, don't stare. So when she went to the ladies' rooms, I went over to him and said, my mother said you're a famous artist. And uh, I said, didn't say a word, just went like this. Took a napkin and took a pen, sketched me and my nose. Uh, okay, I, maybe he was uh, anti-Semitic. I don't know, but anyway, uh, okay. I've heard of a lot of anti-Semitism. I've yet to hear Uncle Semitism. Okay, anyway, um, <laughs> so he sketched me, and that is still in a vault, uh, uh, a, a bank vault. That is my other four hundred one k plan. Okay. That like, is yeah. insanely amazing. Barry. Yes. So. Uh, that's why I love travel. It's always been a part of me. In fact, do you know what? I think Trump supporters should have three 401k plans known as the 401 KKK. <laughs> if, you guys are, if you guys are wondering when he was going to get that next Trump joke in there, you just found out. Right now, there's somebody who just went into another tree on the road <laughs> because you just hit him with that one. Um, yeah, that 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 is uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty amazing. You know, something about uh, Dali that that I found um, financially. I mean, definitely a lot of it. I, I think a lot of his public persona was uh, an act or or putting on. You know, but but there was uh, there was this um, this reality of self promotion. You know, there there was a uh, in a way he was kind of like a you know a man of incredible skill. Uh, but also kind of like a carnival barker and, um, you know, being willing to uh, put himself out there in the public or to go on even even game shows. I think uh, I forget uh, uh, anyone listening to this or watching. You guys could check it out on on YouTube. I think I, I don't know if there was a show called What's What's My Line or something like that. Yes, but there was. There was. But, but Dali was definitely on one on one of those shows. And um, I don't know. I, I wonder uh but now when I think of artists, I think of, you know, you know, uh, people who take themselves way too seriously. And I can't imagine like, say like an, a, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even know enough artists to be able to, to, to pick one out, but imagine one of them being on like, who wants to be a millionaire? Just, it you seems know, a little tough. No, that's a great idea. I've got an, another idea. Let's do a reboot of who wants to be a millionaire. Okay. Here's my idea. It stars Elizabeth, the host, the MC is Elizabeth Warren. And who wants to be a millionaire? The guests are Jeff Bezos and 
uh, Elon Musk. Who wants to be a millionaire? What so they would invest <laughs> them of all their billion billions until they wind up with only one million. And Elizabeth Wa uh, Elizabeth Warren goes, "Yes, I did it. I did it. I got to the one percent." That's our next show. Who wants to be a millionaire? How's about that? Or I had another idea. You said, "What's my line?" What's yeah. my out of line? We just say whatever we want to the guests. We insult them all we want. See, we got to create our own our own game show. We got we got to do it. We can get it on. Um, let's see, you have contacts at Newsmax. Maybe we can get on with Johnny Tobacco. Uh, a five <laughs> get, get, get a five minutes of the game show on there. Oh man, um, what, what was I gonna? Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, you um, you brought up. Uh, well, this is going back. Uh, Audrey Hepburn like enjoying Caravaggio. The first time I, I saw Caravaggio, it's when I, I studied abroad in Madrid. I think it was I studied abroad the semester before I had your class because oh. I think I think the first class I I think it was my junior junior and senior year. I think I had uh, classes uh, with you, um, and I got to study at, at the Prado, uh, which. You know, as a kid, I had no idea just how lucky I was to be able to, you know, be, go to that museum. Oh, I mean, yeah. I could have gone anytime I wanted. It's wonderful. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And speaking of that, um, I'm glad you were there. I'm glad you liked it. But every Christmas, you know what I do? What do you I do? order Christmas gifts from the Prado. And, uh, and people, all my friends think I'm rich because they think it's an A at the end of Prado instead of an O. So they think I'm sending gifts from Prada instead of Prado. And so until your your, your podcast, now they know, oh, damn it, they're going to know the difference. They are all listeners. And um, I, I could cut this out. I can cut that out. I can cut anything out that you want me to cut out from the uh, uh, from the episode. Uh, ac actually, um, you're, you're absolutely great. You're a great interviewer. And this is a great show. And I'm I'm really honored that you asked me. Oh well, well, Barry, you know it. Uh, like I said, you know, writing the book, uh, it gave me a chance to to look back and uh, and uh, I, you know, you were um, always like just such a uh, support, uh, such a supporter of of me, and and I think and I think a lot of your students uh, too. And and it's been uh, very cool to you know to keep in touch with you um, uh, over the years. How. how how you know? Uh, I, I know you're you're in Manhattan, right? And right, what, right. What's it been like? I mean, the past you know couple of years for you, especially with with COVID and uh, and and all that. Well, actually, um, I did get COVID. Just so you know, uh, I have something to talk about, but I did get COVID <laughs> rather late. Went to France. Didn't get did, you know? Didn't get COVID there. I I wore a mask. I happen to like masks as I think you know, because <laughs> when I wear a mask, nobody can see how old I am. That's right. I wear the glasses. I hide the glasses. I, I think it's terrific. And seriously, though, one thing about wearing masks is I have bad pollen allergies in the spring. And I know a lot of people aren't wearing masks now. I wear masks out of doors, and I don't feel the pollen. You know, So I think uh, there's something to it. And if you go to Japan, uh, people wear masks all the time. If there's a flu epidemic. I was in Japan the first time 25 years ago, and uh, they're they're very careful. I mean, I'll tell you another reason why they don't want to sneeze out in public because the Japanese gardens they rake the sand in perfect piles, and God forbid you sneeze without a mask, you're you, you're going to destroy their designs in the sand. So there's a reason to wear a mask in Japan. I mean, I, I think the Japanese have very tiny noses. So I think they're very concerned about Americans going over there and just, you know, just sneezing anywhere that they please. Yeah. And I don't know why they call Jewish women Japs. Uh, well, maybe the ones who had nose jobs, I can see. But the others, I don't know. Like, oh, I, can I be anti-Semitic? I guess so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, that we have entire... We, I'm not hitting myself. Ba Barry is hitting himself. He's being self-hating uh, anti and anti-Semite. Well, did you ever hear of a pro-Semite? I haven't. Uh, I, th I think that is, uh, was that Cy Young or no? Who was the uh, catfish hunter? Who was the Jewish uh, pitcher? Oh, God. I should probably have a better, I, if I'm going to, if I'm going to quip, I should if probably know. Bank, if you live in yeah. Red Bank, you heard a Molly pitcher. I have no idea what that means. What's oh, that, what does that mean? 
was a, a, a woman who came to the aid of soldiers with water during the uh, American Revolution. Okay, that's from Red Bank, New Jersey. Where do you live in New Jersey? I'm from New Jersey. I'm in, I'm in Sussex County. So. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell any of these people where <laughs> where oh, I live. In New Jersey. <laughs> I'm in North uh, North New Jersey, though. I'm in the country. There's a lot oh, of. Uh, yeah. I've, I, there are a lot. Everything around my house makes noises. So if anybody thinks they're gonna, you know, come at me. So. And I'm from Perth Amboy. In fact, when I when I w went to school in France, people asked me where I'm from. I said Perth Amboise. And <laughs> people in people outside of the United States asked me, well, where's Perth Amboy? And I, I said, oh, um, you've heard of the Hamptons? And I said, well, I'm from the Amboys. And when you go on the Turnpike South, the exit that's there says the Amboys. So I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. Wow. But when, when you studied in France, did you was that as an undergrad or uh, graduate school? That was um, my last year. Uh, uh, my, see, uh, I, have, I have friends who said, uh, I have a cousin who insists that everything is, is, is perfect. And he said, you were not Phi Beta Kappa during your senior year. You were Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, you were not Phi Beta Kappa during your junior year. It was during your senior year. And I said, excuse me, I skipped a year. And I, uh, and I skipped the senior year. He said, no, you skipped the junior year. And I said, you know, who cares? So that's one of my cousins. I won't tell you who he is, but he's, uh, anyway, I did study. Uh, I, uh, I studied architecture and art at Ecole des Beaux-Arts. I actually loved it. And um, every time I go back to Paris, it's like visiting France. And there's always something new there. There's uh, the Frank, new Frank Gehry Museum. Have you been to Bilbao in Spain? I think I I think we did like a day trip there when I, when I was in when I when I was studying abroad. Uh, we did a number of those, like to Sevilla and, and all that. Yeah, uh, because Bilbao has the Gary Museum too. In fact, in Bilbao, and I did this as an early been there, haven't done that column. The Getty Museum uh, in uh, Bilbao, oh, wow. the whole oh. city grew up around it, and the whole city revitalized itself with one building. The same way Sydney, Australia, with the Opera House, it became the symbol of the whole country. So one building can make all the difference, like the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It was supposed to be temporary, but hello? It's well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think yeah, it was supposed to be temporary, and then also at the time, the Parisians hated it. Uh, no, Nobody was a fan of it, and then it became a symbol of, of, of pride that they have. No, exactly. And one of the, I'll just say one of the uh, downsides of travel is I led press trip. I led a press trip and trips to um, Kiev, which was then known mm. as Kiev. And when you like a place and you meet the people, um, the downside of travel is whether it's an earthquake that destroys the city or even worse, war. It hits home. It really hits mm. home. Now. Uh, I love the dish chicken Kiev, and now they don't use that anymore. They don't use the term; they use Kiev. And we know that after um, almost two months of war, there's no thing as such thing as chicken Kiev. The people who live in Kiev are real fighters; they're anything but chicken. So I'm glad that dish and that name are out of uh, the Ukraine vocabulary. It's really a beautiful place, and this the most. Uh, this is what you get when you travel. You get weird experiences of hypocrisy and just things that are oxymorons. I'll give you an example. In um, in in Kiev, Kiev, there's a Soviet anti, a Russian anti-war memorial. A woman holding a shield and le and leading her sword up. It's gigantic. It's bigger than the Statue of Liberty. And hmm. uh, that's a monument against war. Hello, it's Russian. If there's one thing they should bomb instead of people. They should have bombed that, that statue. Another thing, I mean, this is just humor, uh, living humor. In St. Petersburg, Russia, there's a, the, hygiene, uh, the hyge Hygienic Water Museum. It's a water purification plant that's now a museum. 
They spend a fortune flood floodlining it at night. There's only one problem. You go to any hotel, and they said, uh, warning, do not drink the water. Do not even brush your teeth with water. Instead of opening a museum for, for water purification and hygiene, they should have used that money to clean the water. To actually clean the water. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's why humor is actually out there. Whenever you travel, you have to have an open mind and an open heart. I, another thing is uh, uh, Ecuador. I've been to Ecuador, and I love it. Uh, they have um, on both sides of the equator outside of the city of Ecuador, they have sinks. I'm not kidding. You turn on a sink and you see the water running in one direction and the water running in the other direction. But even more than that, I love, uh, there's a, a new line of the equator. And about 50 years ago or more, they moved it like 60 feet when they found out that wasn't real equator. So there are two lines there, uh, two different equators. So uh, uh, what I love is just being photographed in both hemispheres. Uh, th th there's, there are lots of fun things you can see with travel. And most people just t t go on a cruise, sit, uh, and then go to a, a shore excursion of three hours, go shopping where the, uh, the guide gets a kickback. Mm. In fact, w when I brought the tours there, they said, come here. Um, we want to we, we want to give you something for bringing people to our our store again, and I said, uh, and I said, oh, uh, uh, thank you. In fact, why don't you give it to them all? Why don't you reduce the prices now? Uh, I said, and sure enough, they get embarrassed and they do it. But um, I love travel, and hopefully, you and your wife will take one of my one of my tours. Well, well, I got I got to say about um, you know one of the. Uh, one of the reasons why I, or, or how I knew that I, I really, you know, wanted to be with my wife is that she made me want to travel. And I, not like she made me, she forced me to travel. She actually made me, I, I wanted to travel with her. And I was in a relationship, uh, before, uh, uh, before my wife, uh, with somebody who I, I, I didn't want to travel with. I didn't, I couldn't stand being with them. It felt like a vacation felt like a chore. It felt like I was, uh, you know, trapped. And my, my wife has sort of opened up, uh, you know, opened up, up that traveler, uh, in me and we really enjoy it. Uh, we, if, if it was up to my wife though, she would be that person seeing like five museums in one day. And oh. we have, we have an agreement where it's like every day we'll do one thing that is, you know, going to a museum or, or, you know, seeing a site or like that. And, uh, on the way there, we have to have something to eat. And then on the way back, we need to have something to eat. So me, I'm, I'm more of the, you know, uh, eat and, and drink well. Um, but I, I and, and she's more of the, the real, you know, tourist wanting to see everything. And, and, well, and we I'll make it work. You, uh, one of my well, latest been there, uh, haven't done that columns is about you solve the problem, museum dining. Uh, mm. There are some museums in France that have a, a new museum. Uh, which is uh, in the uh, the Pinot Museum, which is in the former stock exchange, uh, which was uh, a, a dome structure, a round dome structure. It's fascinating just for the architecture. And a, um, a famous chef opened up the restaurant there. So Paris is so wonderful with food and travel that museums are sometimes the place to dine. Have you been to you've been to the Musée d'Orsay? I take it. Uh, uh, Maybe I, I I don't I don't remember. The Musée d'Orsay restaurant was originally part of the ballroom. Uh, hot, hotels were uh, were sometimes joining stations in the nineteenth century, and this is one of the most elegant restaurants in Paris, and it's very inexpensive, and it's in the Musée d'Orsay. And I just want people to think differently about mm. travel. That instead of going out of the museum, uh, you for instance in the Louvre, eat in the Louvre. Uh, so that if, if it's pouring rain or something, museums during rain days are the best. Or also evenings, because you don't get school groups, you don't get groups there. If you go back to the Louvre, go one of the two nights. It's open late. You'll love it. Yeah, we had a uh, uh, we we went um, 
uh, during the day to the Louvre, but we had a um, a private tour. So it was just my my wife and I and a tour guide, and she was fantastic. And oh, one of the things that that really blew me away. Uh, uh, once we get into into the Louvre, the first thing that she takes us to, the tour guide takes us to, is the Code of Hammurabi, the yeah you know, this this huge rock, you know this in, incredibly historic, uh, you know piece. Nobody's paying any attention to it whatsoever, and I'm and I'm like we have the Code of Hammurabi right here. Like I could reach out and touch it. It felt, uh, you know, it, 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 it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was almost like dream, dreamlike. Uh, the, the, the fact that I existed in the same, uh, you know, uh, few feet as this, uh, as this piece. Um, there, there are lots of things that beyond the Mona Lisa and the Venus uh, yeah. Milo, uh, but I also uh, do something else. I photograph backs of statues. I photograph the back of, of, uh, of, the Venus de Milo, I photograph backs of statues because that's a shot that nobody ever sees. And, mm. and uh, also when you go to, uh, uh, there's a, the gallery, there's a, in, in Rome, for instance, there's the Galleria Borghese. And on three sides of it, there are formal gardens. One side is an, air, a, a, an aviary and formal garden, another one on the other side, and a beautiful park and formal garden in the back. And most tour groups will just go in, you wait in line, you see it, and you go out again. And I've spoken to people, aren't the gardens wonderful? And my advice to people is simple. You go around and visit a building, especially a small building, and take in the whole building on all sides. And no guidebook ever has that in the guidebook for information. And, uh, for instance, the Louvre. The Louvre was built in several different uh, stages. Uh, and if you go to some of the courtyards toward the back, you get a wonderful 16th century facade that's absolutely beautiful versus uh, the Richelieu wing, which was built by Napoleon III. In the, so take in the whole building, walk around it. That's other advice. Mm. So and that's not comedy. But uh, since you love travel, um, I hope you... Um, you do that next time you travel. Well, I think it, I, uh, you know, it might not be comedy, but it's definitely uh, bringing a, a different perspective or, you know, quite literally a different point of view to the experience. Right. That I think. And another thing I say is, you know, I love the intercontinental hotel. Uh, the ballroom is from uh, an open. In fact, next month is going to be 160 years old. It's, it's the first super large deluxe hotel. But my advice to people, let's say you love Paris. You've been there 10 times. Go to a hotel in another section, because when you go to a hotel in a different section, a different arrondissement, you get to walk around it. You get to see the stores. You get to see the restaurant. So you get to see a city from different uh, areas, not just one that you go back to all the time. And yeah. you, even guidebooks, there, a guidebook to Germany, let's say. They'll tell you, oh, Munich, what there is to see in Munich, Luchwanstein within Germany. They won't tell you that go another uh, 65 miles southeast and you'll go to Salzburg, Austria, which is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe because the guidebook is just Germany. So uh, there's lots in this travel area that I would like to remedy as well. So more about you, more about your career. What about serious? <laughs> no, serious. I, as again, Donald Trump gives us narcissists a very bad name. I'll say it twice. Um, you'd be a great uh, talk show host, um, any kind of host on MTV, which I used to think was MTV. But uh, uh, do you have an agent? You really should get an agent. I, I, do, I don't have an agent, but I'm putting this out there. Um, if you want to be my agent, anybody. Uh, or Barry, if you want to be my agent, yeah, we can make yeah. we we can make this uh, we can make this deal happen uh, right now. No, I, I don't have uh, representation. Um, I should. think, I yeah, I yeah, damn right I should. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that um, you know things go well with um, uh, with the book, and I'm able to uh, uh, get it out there, and uh, you know maybe that maybe that helps uh, lead to something. But I, I think I think it's uh, it it's sort of um, I comedy now i feel like there's there's so many different avenues uh to go and um you know i think very much looking back at 
at my career, I had no idea things were going to go the way that they went and, or, you know, lead me to, you know, where I am, uh, where I am now, but, you know, I'm open to say a happy birthday. I saw Thank you. On, on, on Facebook, uh, uh, it was your birthday. I think, uh, the end of, was it the end of February? Yep. Yep. Yeah. February 26th. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I, I got a photographic memory, which means I never bought Playboy growing up. I, I just go never to, had to. That's it. I still remember Miss, uh, March, the cover of Miss March of 1986. Wow, what a number she was. I'm, I'm going to write that down. Miss March 1986. Well, well, Barry, before before we go, I want to know, um, uh, is there any place uh, on the planet you haven't been yet that you're, that you're looking to, to seek out or a place that you want to make sure that you, you, know, you see again? Well, I was going to go to the African country of Togo, but being since the, the pandemic, COVID pandemic, every restaurant that didn't close had food Togo. So uh, I, I've had enough of that word for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I've been to South Africa. I've just about been to every place that I've wanted to. Uh, yeah, what I would like to do, I would. I would like to go back to a rebuilt and free Ukraine in the future uh, when it's, it's a free and independent uh, country again and stays that way so yes i would like to go back there to answer your question all right well well barry this uh uh this podcast is going to come out this thursday so i'm hoping by friday, i'm hoping by friday uh we could have a free ukraine and, and you can get back there because you make it sound uh, from what you described it's a it, it was a, a, a beautiful city and, and or a beautiful country, especially Kiev, and uh, hopefully it gets it gets back there. But uh, Barry Goldsmith, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, for my fans out there, um, this is a, a very special uh, episode for me. I hope you enjoyed it, and please seek out Barry's work. Um, I know that you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. Especially, uh, I've learned a lot of things uh, about travel and his uh, philosophy of it that I did not know before. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope that people travel to your computer and to Amazon and order. That joke isn't funny anymore because your book still is funny and always will be. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And again, please order my book. That joke isn't funny anymore on the death and rebirth of comedy. Just follow the link in the description or head over to Amazon and search for Lou Perez. That joke isn't funny anymore. And please subscribe to my podcast. Leave a five-star review. Why not? Sign up for my newsletter at theluperez.com. And if you want other ways to support my work, you can join theluperez.locals.com. And of course, be sure to support my sponsors, palomaverdecbd.com. Use promo code Lou for 25% off purchases over $75 and black organic cold brew. B L V C K B R E W dot com. Use promo code Lou for free shipping. Thank you.